just by virtue the floor is level yeah hopefully I want to get one now to be a little high yeah it's not weird angle no but you like you would be looking at a security camera no <laughs> if you did it up there, it would be a little weird. You might be looking from a security camera. The angle would be strange. A little bit more high angle. You're used to seeing. Yes, you were shooting up here. You know, nobody would take their camera and put it up so high when you're shooting somebody to shoot a thing. It would be weird. <laughs> I mean, the hospital's deck came down a little bit and it was far away and it had a long lens, you know? I got that far. Put it on the bookshelf. After what page? Okay, good, good. That's good. good. Okay, I want to thank the uh, to begin by thanking the Panosim. Should be a full shleima for for Brian the Leib as Yehudas Avriel should be so as Tavis, and a also a full shleima should be zayche hear good news of Michal Ben Shalamis a full shleima for Sasha Achla Yisrael. Michal, we should be we should hear be so as Tavis. Amen. Everyone knows what I'm talking about from here and from and from Yerushalayim from Eretz Yisrael. We should hear good things. Okay. Yeah, and also thank you. Thank you. The Rahmani Mishpah, the Rahmani Mishpah, being in the whole family, the Shirim Dacha, we know him. Should be a schus for his Nisham. Let's learn one page, one page of days. In, the, in this Mimer from Tzvi Maya, so it goes on sign. <coughs> And it, you know, it, it, this is uh, an attempt to put into writing the the, the talk of a tzaddik who, who jumps from one Indian to another. It's not written as a safer. It's more <coughs> transcribing shmuz. So at this point in the shmuz, the scenario is talking about the very deep connection between one's eyes. This is what we're discussing. Shmirsk Hainaim, Taharis Hainaim, Dusha Hainaim. This is the Shurish of of the Avod of Shmir Sabris, Yasav at Sadik, the Pras Hale Ayin, Yasav at Sadik, the eyes of Yasav at Sadik. The connection between the eye and and the rotsen, the will, the desire of a person. And we're learning that if a person's eyes are unclean. If a person's eyes are unclean, it makes it very, very difficult for that person to long for good things. That's what we're talking about. When the eyes are unclean, when the windows to the neshama are unclean, that has a, that has a terrible effect upon the ritzainus, the cheshek. A person loses his cheshek. <coughs> Even someone who continues on 
keeping mitzvahs, and continues on trying to learn the Tadavan, but it's very, very, very hard to be alive when the eyes are unclean. Shemesh Baruch made us in such a way, we can talk a lot more about that, why that is. And we're talking about certain mitzvahs, Tfilim, such as coming up, we're going to be coming up talking about Kriyashma. There are certain mitzvahs that are uniquely connected to our eyes and helping to them clean those windows. But but look look on page Yud Bey, is the left, the left column, second paragraph, beginning with the word V'ka'asher. That's what we're up to, V'ka'asher. Tashem Reish Rabbeinu Lashon. Ros Labas Ha'esh, Teich Hasneh. When Moshe Rabbeinu saw the fire inside of the of the bush, inside the sneh, Lahaven Madu'a Lahiva Hasneh. So Moshe Rabbeinu didn't understand. Why was it that there's a fire, but the fire is not consuming the, it's not burning the the uh, the bush? As a fire de kirotzen. When there's such a, a a fire, a fire, a rotzen that's on fire, shezah yitzarich lisrof is kol agolus, es kol es kol haparo, the kol hakoshim shenim tzorim b'sach hasne. In other words, Rav Tzimai was just paraphrasing what's found in the Svar Makadoshim. <laughs> that the we spoke about this a little bit Shabbos morning a couple of weeks ago by by the parasha by Pasha Shmais. That the sna is means many things on many levels, but it means each one of us. And and if there if there's a fire dick <coughs> rotsen, when there's a strong rotsen, when a person's on fire with strong red signers, <coughs> then my Shabbat didn't understand that if there's a fire, if the Jewish people are on fire with a longing to connect to Hashem. And to get out of Gaulus and so on, the Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't understand. If that's the case, then why is it that this is, that this fire is not burning away the remainder of Gaulus? Why is Paro still? Because when a person's rotsin is strong, again we're talking about the individuals being in Gaulus. When a person's rotsin is strong, then no power can get in your way. Then you're able to get out of Gaulus if your Rotson is strong. Rotson has tremendous car. A person has Rotson, has will and longing, can break through. As it says, Chazal say, or a person truly wants to be pure, if you really, really want to get out of Gaulus, if you really, really want to, to be good, to change, and so on, not to be stuck with Pyro. Then, Misayinoso, they help you. It's in the plural. Misayinoso. If you sign up for that program, because of your rots and because of your will, if you sign up for that program, there's, there's, special, there's special help for people who, are, who, are, who truly want to get out of Golis, who truly want to leave Mitzrayim, who want to get away from Pyro. So the Mashad and Rabbi Nachman, others said he can talk about this. Why is it Messiah is in the plural? It should say that Hashem helps you. If you want to get out of Golis, it should say, Hashem helps you. Or Messiah also, which would mean he helps you. Hashem helps you. What's Messiah? What is some sort of committee? What is Messiah also? Loshon Rab, my Loshon Rab. So the Swarm say, Messiah also means that Haim Harit Sinus, your own Ritzinus in the plural, that you don't give up. The Ritzinus that a person has, Haim Haritzinus, Habolatayr, and Kol Rotzen, every single time that you and I feel that will, that desire to be better, we call Rotzen, Nivra Malach. The Swarab say that a Malach is created. A Malach, some energy. I mean, that, that's, of course, Hashem's way of helping us. So Messiah means that we do create Malachim. We do create this energy with each one of our positive retainers. Oid malach, va oid malach. Sof, sof. Sof, kol sof, messiah, no sof. And if a person doesn't give up and continues to want and continues to be filled with rotsen, so then 
those malachim form a <coughs> committee. Each rotsen creates a malach, and the malachim, we already have a, a few minyonim of malachim, and this is a siyayta dishmaya, a koach that a person has that takes him to a place beyond what he normally would have the strength to do, and these malachim <coughs> carry him outside of Mitzrayim. They take him away from Paro. Because there's nothing that can get in the way of true Ratzin. Therefore, the essence of our Vadis Hashem is to be people who have <coughs> strong Ratzin. When a person is filled with will and determination, then he gets out of Mitzrayim. Therefore, HaKash Baruch Hu wants us to think about this and to work on this and to do whatever we can do to strengthen our Ritzayimus, to be people who have Baalei Ratzin, who have more Ratzin, who have more desire, who want to, don't give up, who are pushing. There are a lot, there are a lot of people that I meet, who are wonderful, <laughs> wonderful tzaddikim, who will do anything in the world to advocate for their kid. Like if the kid doesn't take the if the school doesn't take the kid into, in, in that the parents will like will will turn over heaven and earth to, to, to do something for their child, and it's always an inspiring thing to see parents who will refuse to give up on their children. But the very same parents, when you talk to them, you see that many years ago they gave up on themselves. People give up on themselves very very easily nowadays, very easily. The the. I, I told you about this conversation I had years ago in the mountains. <clears throat> we were first married, and we were, uh, was, we were in this place in the mountains. I was a rebbe there for the kids, and I was giving shir, uh, daf yomi and the shirim for the men. And and um, and there was this guy that he was like, he came from a, he came from a, some sort of a chesedish background, but he like checked out. You know, like, come out didn't come to minion. It was just like, and and he came over to me. And this I'm talking about 40 years ago, and he and he said I want you to learn. He said I want you to learn Gemara with my uh, extra, to learn with my son. And he said that, and he was a, he's a well-to-do guy. This guy, and he said, you sit with my son 45 minutes a day. I'll give you a hundred dollars for 40 minutes. Now, now that might not sound like something now. A hundred dollars. 40 years ago for 45 minutes. He said learn 45 minutes with my son. A hundred dollars. That was like. <coughs> That was like you hit the jackpot. It was like, no, it's an <laughs> unbelievable amount of money. hundred dollars for 40 minutes. And, um, and I found it to be a very interesting conversation. And he already was taking out you know, money. He said, I'll give you an advance. You know, it's like right, the businessman, you know this thing. <laughs> and I said, oh. And he said, what is it? I said, I said, I love your son. And I think he's terrific. I'm happy to learn with him. And I said, the issue is not about the money. It sounds nice, but that's not the issue. So he said, so he said, I know what you're thinking. This is what he told me. He's a smart guy. He said, you're thinking, why would an oysterf like me, why would a low life like me want to give you $100 to learn of a comedy with my kid? When you know that I go to the racetrack in Monticello, I don't know if it's still there, but it's still, it's still in operation. But I'm at the track, you know, I'm uh, Shabbos, and I, and I come out, don't come to davening. I said, I, I said, uh, <laughs> it's a kasha. <laughs> Thinking about that, you know. So he said, and the guy got all emotional. It was the first time I ever saw him serious. First time I ever saw this guy serious. He got all emotional. And he said, listen to me. He said, he said I'm Taka, not the person I should be. And I come from very high Liga Tzadikim. He told me his yichas, very big yichas. And he said, and, I, and I'm embarrassed, but I want my daughter to be good. And he was crying. I was so misspoiled from it. I was so taken aback by it. And at that time, I said to him, I hugged him. And he doesn't go for that kind of stuff. But I, didn't, I hugged him. And I said, I'll agree on one condition. You learn too. Yeah, that me and you will learn also. 
I learned I learned with Dovil, with your Dovil. No, I don't want your money. Keep your money. I learned with Dovil. But only the, uh, the payment is that you and I will learn together. That's the payment. And he was masking. He was masking. Wow. And we learned Tanya together. So. It's all a story. I'm still touched. It's all a story. But but the person gives up on himself. The sheaf is in the rich sinus to have for, for one's for one's child. They're infinite. They're endless. Like Rabbi Sadik says, because then the kudah primus of the child is you. So you don't know how to you don't you 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 you, you feel yourself that I can't want anymore. You feel that it's I'm, I'm too tired. I'm I'm beaten. I, I I don't have the strength anymore. I've given up. I am who I am. But my kid, my kid, my kid. Oh my kid. I want my kid to be at Sadik. I'm the kid to be inside. By the way, a nice part of the story is that this Dovidal is a Rosh Karlan. He's a Rosh Karlan. He's a Rosh Karlan. How's Abba? What? How's Abba doing? Is Abba's doing okay. Abba's doing okay. He's been through some, some Inyana. He's doing okay. I hope he doesn't hear this. But it's okay. He's, he's the type who would, he would, he wouldn't bother. He's that type. But the sons, the sons of Rosh Kol, the sons of Tamar Chacham, Elochid, and 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 the the the, the of being a, of being an Eved Hashem is to is to have that rotsin, to have that will, to have that sheif. Now here's where Kedusha Sainayim comes into the story. To be a person who still wants. Who doesn't give up? Not just on our kids, but on ourselves. Akara Hazesh al Chuka Sipui longing Yichu the Kol Shar Halashina Shall Rotsn. All the other there are many Lashanas in Tanakh for wanting. A lot of Lashanas. Misyachasim El Hainai. All of these terms of longing are connected to eyes, to the eyes. Kamay Shaim Kiseda, like I mentioned. Earlier, the, the words that we say in Nishmas, Kichol Ayin Page Yud Gimel. Kichol Ayin Lechot Tetzapa. Kichol Ayin Lechot Tetzapa. Every eye, every eye is longing for you. Einenu Lechot Tluyos. The whole Rosh Hashanah Davenu. Einenu Lechot Tluyos. Ad she techaneinu, techaneinu betotzi l'or dineinu. Einenu Lechot Tluyos. Einenu Lechot Tluyos. Einenu Lechot Tluyos. Einenu Lechot Tluyos. Uh, all of Tanakh is talking about the eyes longing, the eyes wanting. My eyes are longing for my God. The whole sprach of David Melech, who we're told was Yifei Einai, right? It says in Tanakh about David Melech, he was red and he had beautiful eyes. Yifei Einai. David had beautiful eyes. So we see these, these are the eyes of David and Melech. Since the most valuable asset that a Jew has is his will. If you have that will, then then there's no power that can keep you. And even if, God forbid, you're, you're physically confined, you're stuck someplace. We were talking about this in the Chesidish on Erev Shabbos. Even though you might be stuck someplace, but in terms of who you are, power can't tell you what to do or who to be. And even if power, God forbid, can lock you up in a cell and, he can, and not give you your tefillin, he can't, he can't stop you from being connected to Hashem Baruch. No power in the world has ever succeeded in doing that. If a, as long as the person has rotsin, as long as the person wants, no power can stop that. So we see, kol zamach shakor hazeh shal rotsin, histoikikus gaguim longing tzimon thirsting misyachis lechush hariiya shal hanesham. We see the connection to the chush hariiya. Remember, we spoke about there being two levels of sin. Ki ayin ba'ayin. There's the ayin bi'ayin. We're not talking about uh, just seeing your physical eyes, but in order for the in order for the uh, the eye that's inside the eye, in, 
to be able to function in a healthy way, meaning the eye of the nisham to function in a healthy way, then the external eye, the physical eye, has to be clean. It has to be clean. When the physical eye becomes dirty, God forbid, then that, then that eye is no longer an eye of a chalai l'chat etzapta, of a nein l'chat tliyos. Then the eye becomes, the eye becomes stuck in, in this world, and then it doesn't connect to the eye that's b'ayin, ki ayin b'ayin you, ki ayin b'ayin you. And 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 because of that, what what he's explaining is that once a person, God forbid, once a person doesn't have those those eyes that are filled with longing, then then he loses his chiyas. Then, he, then his Yiddishkeit is not alive. It's oftentimes it's not just his Yiddishkeit. Bechlal, he loses his chiyas. There, there's a there are different Torahs and Sadiqim. There are many Torahs in this. I'm just some that came to mind as in Stalin from the Rabashal, the different Sadiqim, where they say, also the Pasuk can tell him, Haver Einai, Meir Oishav, Midrachecha Chayeni. Haver Einai knows Hashem, help my eyes not to see. Things in the wrong way, not to look at bad things, and then the pas again is vidrachecha vidrachecha chayeni. Again, the connection between eyes, eyes, and life, and chiyus, and, and chiyus, because a person who's shomer kedusha seinayim is alive. He feels that light. Because what does being being alive? Being alive means having hope. It means being optimistic and having hope. That's what that's what it means. Hine ein Hashem el yireyav. I'm saying psukim that are familiar. Everybody, we say these all the time. Again, that the person who's God fearing has Hashem's has the eyes of Hashem. Listen to the words. We say these words in davening. from It's not talking about physically dying, biologically dying. It's not talking about the chaver kedusha. It's talking about lahatzel mimoves nafsham, ein Hashem al yireya. The, the the one who has yirashemaim, he has eyes that are pure, and as a result of that, lahatzel mimoves nafsham. His soul doesn't die. It doesn't mean dropping dead. His soul is alive. He still wants. He has this chiyus. Lachayosam berav. What does it mean lachayosam berav? So the English and the, it says until is that to sustain him and keep him alive while he's hungry. But the Chassidus Yisrael say, the Chayos and Barav means, the Beis Avram from Slanim says, the Chayos and Barav means to keep this person alive and still hungry for Yiddishkeit. You know how beautiful? The simple English is that the guy is, the guy is in a desert, he's starving, and Hashem, the, the Tzadik, looks to you with hope, that you'll keep him alive even though he's so hungry. That's the, that's the pshat. But in the Swarm it says, it says, and, and, and if the eyes are pure, l'chayos and means that this person will still be alive with a hunger for, for life. L'chayos and barav, will still be hungry. The worst thing is when you see to see in your own child that the kid is not hungry for for learning a fadam. Oh, to see that the, the again I'm using the kid as a as a marshal because it's of course it's, uh, it's with ourselves when you don't feel that hunger anymore. There was a guy here at Shabbos that we had a brachas a lot of company here on Shabbos, and this guy was telling me how he loves the daven. He was a Friday night. He's wow. He's he's heard about the daven. He loves the daven. He loves the daven, and he said. He said, you know what? And it's not so much longer than where I dive. <laughs> That's what he said to me. So I said, I said, well, you're so busy. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? Like, what do you <laughs> because he was telling me how he, lo- how he loves, but he was sort of saying to me, like, I wish I could come here. And, you know, I'm not going to come here. He lives in the neighborhood. He says, but I'm not going to come here. He was like, I don't know. And he's telling me this whole mice. So I, I said, like, why, what are you so busy with? You want to come? You God. Someone says you can't come. He says, "Dive wherever you like. I don't care. We have uh, it's busy here. We have, we have the seats are full." Baruch Hashem. I'm not looking for another customer, but I'm not I'm not trying to pitch for you to come here. But you're telling me all my stuff about how the dive is gavul. It's gavul. It's not that much longer. People say it's like, and like he's like trying to figure out whether it's shaykh. Maybe you know, maybe Shabbos Bavarchim to come. You know, he's trying to figure this out. Maybe I should come here a little bit. 
I said to him, like, what are you so busy with? What are you doing? <laughs> on a Friday night, like, you don't have, you don't have 15 minutes on it. You know, what are you so busy with? What are you so, this is, and, and this is, I'm coming back to that, that Hulk Kufa of two years ago, uh, whatever that was, that brought out, who are the people who are still hungry for Yiddish grain? The ones who were not hungry walked away from their shuls. They walked away. The ones who are still hungry, they are, not only that, that, there were many I saw that Davke, through that Tkufa, the hunger became stronger for Yiddishkeit. The Chayoy Samirav, because a Jew has to be hungry. Hungry for a black Gemari, you have to be hungry for a Davni, you have to be hungry for a Nigan, <coughs> you have to be hungry for, uh, for an, uh, <coughs> a drop of Yiddishkeit, to be thirsty, to be hungry. And that's how they said in Islam the meaning of the Pasuk. Ein Hashem El Yirei, Help me that my children shouldn't die while being alive. Help me that I shouldn't die while being healthy. Help me that I should still be hungry for you. That's what David Melch is saying. What happens if a person loses the hunger? That to him, the, the, the most important thing in Shabbos is, is 15 minutes like this or 15 minutes like that. And what are you doing? So you, for your nap or something, what are you, when are you going to get to sleep? Shabbos is... Yeah, Shabbos is it's five o'clock or whatever, five thirty, six o'clock. What do you what do you what's the matter with you? He can't make a cheshman of a lachadaidi, it's gonna hurt his his timing. What happens to him? He doesn't have enough time to finish his kugel. You lose the hunger for Yiddishkeit. And the and and what the Swarm is telling us is the root and source of this is Ain Hashem El Yirev. It has to do with how it has to do with how we see things that we should that we, that we should be filled with a, with a longing. It's an interesting thing. We're talking about how how important how important Shmuel Sanaim, Tar Sanaim, that is the mafteh, is the key. Our eyes are the key to the neshama, and to our being people that are still hungry and still alive. So you would think that someplace in Shmuel Esrei we should have him for this, no? You would think that somewhere in Shmuel Esrei. So here's the here's the quiz for today. Do we ask for this anywhere in Shmuel Esrei? You would think that this since. We're just learning all the Swarm say that the Yisod, Chavetz Chaim says, Chasam Soifer, Rebbe Nachim, the Maharsha, all the Sadiqim are saying that the Yisod of being a Jew is to have this Ishtaikos, and longing, and longing is something that, that, that a person can have only if the eyes are really, really pure, and the person knows how to close his eyes like Krishna, we're going to talk about, to this world. So you would think that there'd be a whole thing in Shemun Esri to, to beg Hashem to help us with this. So, is there? Right? Who said the Sechaz at the end? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it goes together with Kili Shuasa Kivinu Kalayam. The Sechaz and the Enenu. The Sechaz and the Enenu with Shukhlitz and Rachman. And it's connected to Kili Shuasa Kivinu. And how does it go? Kili Shuasa Kivinu Kalayam? Sapim? The Tsipui. And then Vesecha Zen Heineinu. Vesecha Zen Heineinu. Who are the people? Who are the people that are filled with a longing to return to Yerushalayim? I'm not talking about the, you know, they have some nice political, philosophical ideals or, you know, Jewish identity. I'm talking about the, the you know, Besamikdash, Mashiach. See on the way that it, the way that, that uh, it was promised to us. <laughs> not not because you you know you you, you, you like a nice vacation and they, <laughs> I'm talking about Damas, the Pneumius of Yushalayim, the Pneumius of Edges so not to, to visit kids and to take to take their friends out to eat. And that's all that's nice. But Damas of what does it mean? So the the terrace is Vesachazana <laughs> Ainana Bushovitsion. Vesachazana Ainana Bushovitsion that our eyes should be zaycha. The second, our eyes ve'enenu sirena malchusecha. The whole myth of going to your sign of the regular is called is called riya. Al carbon is a carbon riya. It's an amazing thing. Neira nala was nala v'neira v'nistach right in in musaf. Nala neira v'nistach. What's this thing? Come to the whole the whole. Inyan of Yontiv is Nalev and Neiro, is to go up and to see. <laughs> and, the, and the whole davening is bringing us to that point of Mitzapim Li Yeshua, 
and the Sechazen, Yishos, if you have a Yishu, the Sechazen ain't ain't ain't. Because if you have, because if, in order for you to be able to have this Tzipiyah for Yushalayim, again, not for Yushalayim stop, but to be among those who are filled with a, a Tzipiyah for the for Geula, for Mashiach, to get out of Mitzrayim, to get away from Paro, to have David HaMelech, to have Moshe Rabbeinu, to have Mashiach, to, to, to have Yushalayim, to have a base of Migdash. In order to be such a person, you have to have clean eyes. That's for Sechazen Einen. For Sechazen Einen. So the whole, the whole, the whole Shemun Esrei is to build a person up and to build up that shuka, and that longing, and that rotsen to come to a place where a person can finally come and say, "Rabbi Shalom, help me. My eyes should be clean." And this should be what I'm looking forward to. Are you looking forward? Are we looking forward more to to B'shuv Chalitzin Barachim? What is a person looking forward to? Whatever I don't know, it's the Super Bowl this Sunday, next Sunday, whatever it's around now. It already was? Today. It's today, Mamish. It's it's today. Mamish. Today. I really didn't know. I knew they were making things for the guys in the yeshivas. And also, I didn't know it was today. I thought it was... Wow. Oh, my God. Okay. So Yiddish guys canceled this afternoon? I didn't know who was playing. Joe Namath, I'm assuming, is quarterback. Don Main is my man. I don't know what's going on. George Sauer and Don Maynard are out there. I hope. Emerson Boozer, No. <laughs> These guys, I'm, I don't know if they're alive anymore. <laughs> no, probably not. They overdosed a long time ago. I said, today's Super Bowl. So, so what is it? What, what's the what's your Zene in Einenu? That's the match I was talking about, the thing with the television and the World Series yesterday. What's the Zene in Einenu? What are your eyes longing for? If the, it, 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 so, we can make jokes a hint and a hair. You know yourself, what is it that you look forward to in life? So the whole Shemun Esrei is to come to a place where a person can really honestly say, Esk Hashem and then you know what I look forward to? You know what my eyes would like to see? Shuv Chilitzian Brachemim. Shuv Chilitzian Brachemim. That's what my eyes would like to see. That's something. And you're saying the clean eyes keep the ruts on going. Without yeah. clean eyes, the ruts on goes away. Without clean eyes, when the eyes get sullied and dirtied and polluted, and 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 foggy. Without those, then we get then, then there's a blockage between the eye and the eye in the eye in the eye, the eye of the neshama, and then the things that you look forward to in the Super Bowl. That's what you look forward to. Those are the things that that, that that give you a chiyus. The next vacation. When's the next vacation? Just finished midwinter. So when's the next vacation? Or when's the next? You know, when's the next break in this or the next thing of that? Or to look forward to it, or whatever it is, a, a, a simcha, or whatever. Each person has their own their own uh, list of what they look forward to. But but it's only a person of Eina Hashem Yerev that he's able to come and Shimon Esmeik to say, really, or when you say when you say kedusha veinenu veinenu sirena malchusacha veinenu sirena malchusacha veinenu sirena malchusacha. But it's brought down already from Kadmonim. It's brought down already. The shirsh of this is really already in Chazal, in, in, in uh, an old Medrash, that when you're saying Kaddish, 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 there's an Indian that was an avoided to, that the eyes of a person look up when you say Kaddish, 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 and that you're able to look Kivyachal in the eyes. It's uh, ayin by ayin when you're saying Kaddish, Kaddish, Kaddish. And, what, and that person's able to say to Hashem, the person's able to say to Hashem, Veinenu surena malchusach. All my eyes are looking forward to is seeing the fulfillment of what you promised in the in the prophecies. That you made these promises. That's what I'm looking forward to. So if you can say that humanity yesterday, so I don't know it was Shabbos, the Super Bowl. So so persons they say Kedusha, but at the same time, all you're thinking about is I'm going to be with my best friends with some hero sandwich sitting around with, with you know, <laughs> sitting around with a with a, a screen that covers the whole wall or something with a couple of, with a couple of Aurelum killing each other, and that's my whole uh, my whole other. I'm, I know this is a, I'm scared to hear the answer. Are there any professional Jewish football players? I know baseball. Baseball's an able to. I'm talking about football. Did you ever hear of a, of yeah, a Jewish? Sure. There are half Jewish. Yeah. 
Really? There's one quarterback. I, I never remember. In the old days, we never heard of a Jew that was Jewish. His father's Jewish. father's Jewish. His father's yeah, Jewish. Yeah, Jewish. Yeah, Jewish. Oh, only his father? Yeah. So. Most of the older Jews. <laughs> that's that's a good thing. I, I'm not talking about the owners. I'm talking about the players. Players. When I was a kid, I've never heard of one Jewish football player. There's no such thing as a Jewish. But kind of, first of all, why would any Jewish mother allow a kid to even do that? I we had a thing when I was in high school. There was this short kufa where there was a tackle football league in the yeshiva, with the yeshivas. A very short kufa, <laughs> but it was long enough for me to insist that I had to have uh, shoulder pads, and the whole outfit, the whole uniform. We're going to go on Sunday. We're going to play tackle football. Uh, it was a horrible because I what happened was that I, I was I was a skinny guy, and I was actually a wide receiver. That was I, that's what I was doing, and uh, and this huge guy. First of all, we had yeshivas, but it was also Salomon Shachter. You know, it wasn't really orthodox, but they got into the league and they had like big guys. Because the less religious you are, the bigger you are. So they had these big guys and there was an interception. I was the only guy in the field to tackle this guy because I was the wide and I was the only guy to get him. So I thought he was going to, I, I wasn't going to start with this guy. He was huge. So, but I wanted to make it look like I was making his style this, you know. Like, <laughs> but he didn't care. He just came like straight at me. He just came straight at me. And I, I, and I had this like split second to decide, is, it, is this kid die? <laughs> my grandparents were killed. And why would I, why would I want to die like this? And, and I didn't do it. I just like sort of let him go. <laughs> and my friend said, up by like, you can try to get him out, out of bounds. And I was like, yeah. It's crazy. I'm gonna get killed for this. You know. so, I come from survivors. You got to survive. <laughs> what do you look forward to? So with their with their Jewish football players, uh, sports, all of these things. So since it's the Super Bowl today, I, I, I don't know the oil here is interested in that at all. But the, the, many of the guys, the kids, for sure. I hope you've outgrown that stuff. But but the but the 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 a person. To be able to say, to be able to say those words and to mean them, that I really do look forward to that, to seeing the Hizgalas of your Malchus, to see the end of Golas. Every one of us, when we hear the news, like last night, we heard already that the little the other brother died now. And, and so I was talking to somebody. He was telling me that his sister's a nurse and the baby died, the baby, the kid died in her arms. This person, you also know who he is, I'm not say his name, I don't want to say his name, but the, 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 the sister's a nurse and the, the, she works in the hospital there. So, <coughs> also broken from that, to hear such things. But the only way for all of that to end, so everybody's thinking if the if only in this, so now we can now we have this guy Gvir, so he's Ben Gvir, he's gonna do it. And and now Bibi's back, so it's gonna be better. Okay, hell of I everything should be better, it should be talking better. But to feel that Sahara Shina. To, we can't understand. So then why does Hashem let such a thing happen? Somebody sent me last night. How could it have happened? The kid died, and I said, okay, answer such a thing. For, for, what are we longing for? You're longing to that. Yes, it's terrible news, and everybody's going to go on with the Super Bowl today. They're not canceling any of these parties because of what happened to those kids. Maybe they are. I shouldn't say it. Are any of these Super Bowl parties going to be canceled because we're in mourning over the uh, of some children that got killed, got ran over by some Russia? They're going to cancel the Super Bowl parties. The the, the, the Jews now, no, because they're looking forward to it for a long time. And they ordered the food already a week ago. So they're looking forward to it. To make a cheshun of who we are. <coughs> what does it mean to be a yid bechlal, to have a sensitivity to other Jews? And not just to say, it's terrible news. This is not going to stop until Mashiach comes. It's not this government or that government. There's no way to stop this until Shuv Chilitz and Brachman. There are much smarter people than me and you that are trying to figure this out. And they're not figuring it out. How do you stop a Yishmaeli from going in a car? I, I don't know why they stopped it for a few years. I, I just, I, 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 I just knew that it was Hashem, that Hashem put an end to it for a few years. 
Any 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 Yishmaeli that wants to go with his car can run into somebody. I don't know why they don't. I, uh, it's not that they they don't do more of that. It means that there was something holding them back. Something. There's a Kashbar who was holding it back, and now and now and now it was allowed back into the world. Something like this. So how how can anybody stop such a thing? Who can who can figure this out? Someone knows how to go. They can try to get it. Go after Hezbollah. They can go after Hamas. The Israelis have all kinds of murdic uh, intelligence everywhere. Uh, you know they they find their way into here into there. And they got cameras on the whole world. And they got drones over the whole world. How do you stop a Russia from going with this car? And, and and how do you stop that? That's not a drone. Can't stop that. You can't do anything about that. You can't. You can't. There's nothing to do about that. There's nothing to do about some about. Some some guy that's walking, some Yishmael is walking in Yushalayim. He, t- he turns around with a knife and he starts and he stabs somebody. He's not part of. He's not. A, he's not working for 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 uh, for what you call Hamas. He's stop stop uh, his own Russia. And there and there are, and there are a million of them that want to do that. So how's this going to stop? If a person has a hergish for it means to be part of Am Yisrael. To be able to to be able to come to say if you to really have a longing to see such a thing as so it's not just about a longing for a better davening, which is good, a better learning, more uh, chiyus when we when we doing mitzvahs like chayyus and berav. Maybe we have a rav for Yiddishkeit to be emes to be emes bring the shiach that it should already be an end of all of this, that we shouldn't, that there shouldn't be any more of this, that we should come to the home of a shamnal, of an eroi, of an ishtach, of an ashur, that we should be able to go up to Beis HaMikdash and see, and to see there's no, that there's no mask of the Harabayas, that there's a Beis HaMikdash in the Harabayas, and that the, and that all the Rishoyim is our Rishon Kula Kosh and Tichla, and the Shalas is and Tavim and Aras. All of that depends upon longing. Hashem made it in such a way. And what we're learning is, in the Sugi of Tahar Zainayim, that if a person's eyes a person's eyes have become covered, then he, does, he loses his vision to see the end. And the end is, B'Shuv Chalitzin Barachimim, is V'Einem Nusirvena Machlosachim. But Sadiqim, that's where their eyes are. V'Chalayim L'Chot Tetzapim. E'en Hashem L'Yireyim, L'Miachim L'Chazla, L'Hasim L'Uzna Hashem, L'Chayisim B'Rav, that the eyes of a tzaddik to be able to look at things in such a way, in a clear way, of what's important in life, and to want what's important in life. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what he's talking about. Let's just finish the paragraph. V'chol kamesh ha-ri ha-gashmiz, yoysin the ki, ha-ri ha-gashmiz, yoysin the shmur, the cleaner our, our way of looking at things are, our physical eyes, the cleaner they are, im gedar misyagim, we try to to watch our eyes, and to look at, not to look at bad things, we're going to spend a good couple of weeks in Halacha talking about the in Halacha. The rice is Rabban is about the the dinim of Istakwis and looking at living people who we shouldn't be looking at and looking at images on screens. We'll talk about in Halacha, Mr. Shah. Harayon and Sarim Bedor Cholish were in a weak generation. Shem Zor Harayodez, Achulsha, Shaladar, Hashem knows the weaknesses of our generation. Ramasha Kerber, Chayvah Besviv, and what's going on. Hayats of Bor, Mibayas, and Murchus, the Yetzar was on fire. The Sneh. There's Bor Abayish. It doesn't mean being perfect, as Simei says. We, we're living in crazy times. But at least to have a rutzen, to start making some changes in our Tahar Seinayim, to try to improve our Tahar Seinayim. A person knows, each person knows how much, according to who he is, how much Hashem wants us to have these clean eyes. They remember by his eyes that, so we could have this feeling of Israelis, to try not to go to look at the things that are going to bring us to places where we see things that we shouldn't be looking at, get a lift them together, fences and walls to build up. That through guarding the external eye, then we're able to come to the eye, the eye inside. And through that, there'll be a gilu of those returns. I want to end with this, uh, something I. It was a Hashgachah protest I saw this yesterday. I hadn't looked in the safe in a long time. And I was looking for another safe and it happened yesterday here in the office that this was in the way. <laughs> and I was pushing it away and I said, oh, yeah, it's not nice. Uh, I was moving this away to get to the other safe and I always feel bad about that. And I took and I said, let's, let's see something. So I opened it up in this way. So it takes a second. Listen carefully. This is from Rabbi Zilberstein's son-in-law. He's a Rabbi Yosef's son-in-law. 
in, in Bnei Brak. So he says that, he sa- says over that it was the chasna of, of Baron Belzer. You know, Baron Belzer was the Kodesh Kedosh. Baron Belzer, Kodesh Kedosh. Shmir Sainai, Baron Belzer. Anyway, Shenerche of Poland. It says this, it was the wedding of the of Baron Belzer that was in Poland. And all the big tzaddikim, everybody, all the rashivas came. And, uh, and word came that the Polish governor, whatever you call it, the, uh, the pirates over there, the, Pol- the, the, the that the big person from the government was coming with his uh, rabbison, was coming with his wife, who was not a person that was dressed in any way that was appropriate, and that the two of them were coming to the chasna to honor the Belzer Rabbi. The chasn, Rebarala, comes into his father, Rebbe Sachadov, and he's crying. That, 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 uh, this is what's going to be by this tarfis, this novelas. These novelas are going to come to the chasna and they're going to want to come to give a mazel tov to us. Ha'aba Hagadol, the father, Rebbe Sachadov, understood that you can't tell these people not to come. That's not a choice to tell them not to come. So he tried to, so he calmed his son down. This is what he told him. He says, it says in the passage, Lo shasu achrei levav kum achrei nechem. He's saying, davening. Lo shasu achrei levav kum achrei nechem. Don't follow achrei levav chem, your heart and your eyes. Now, regarding that, the Chazal say in that passage, ha'ayin roa, we've spoken about it already, the eye sees, v'halev chomet, and the heart wants, right? So the beginning of the process is, it starts everything with the eye. So may I know various at from the eye, the eye sees, and now the heart wants. So that's the that's the seder, the eye, and then the heart. Vim Cain, so the bells of his father, Rabbi Arul's father, Rabbi Sachadov, is it should first say it should say the pasuk Lo Sasu or what? Achrei, Einechem, and then Vachrei Levadchem. It's good kasha, right? The order should be Achrei Einechem, and then Achrei Levadchem. The eye sees, and the heart wants. So why does it first say the heart and then the eye? So I read to you, it says like this. If you the Amr Lubna Chasan, Shabem is Hakol Maschim Yalev. The truth is, everything begins in the heart. Kia Ayin Roa is Masha Alev Chomed. You look where you want to look, what your heart really wants. That's where you look. That's the Ayin inside the Ayin. Vim Halev Lo Yir Siliros is Menayal Amachuza, and if and he said if, to his son that if your heart does not want to see the, the Polish uh, and his wife, you won't see it. your eyes won't see it. That's what he said. And you could be sure that's exactly what happened. That if your heart doesn't want it, then your eyes won't see it. That's what he said. It's a tremendous so Not to talk, to think about that. That is what he said to his son. If your heart, because it begins in the eye in the eye. That's the heart, in the eye in the eye. If that part of you doesn't want this, then you won't see it. And you can be sure that they were standing right in front of a viral of Belzer, and he didn't, he didn't see. It's not even a question that he didn't see, what he wasn't supposed to see. That's already a big madrig. That's a big, big madrig of Sadiq. We're not holding with such a thing, but we understand what it means. That it's not valid to work on that ayin ba'ayin. You can't just clean your eyes. You have to want to clean your eyes in order to be able to want. First, you have to want to clean your eyes. That begins in the heart. You have to have, to have that rotsen, at least that I should be able to have a rotsen. A rotsen to have a rotsen, that's called raiva deriva. A rotsen to have a rotsen, that, that, that begins inside of a person's heart. Otherwise, we should come to that. Amen. Amen.